So as you guys know from our previous episodes, we have finally arrived back in our beloved San Andres. And this is one of the few times where our SSL episodes have actually caught up to us in our real-time location. But what you guys don't know, of course, is that we're about to leave San Andres in our next episode. We're sailing with our new crew, Brian and Amalia, back to Panama. And that's where we'll be spending some time bringing some patrons and family on board before we have our guests for the last sail. It started on February 1st and lasted four weeks ending back in San Andres, where we are now. We arrived just in time for our guests to fly out, and a week later, the entire island got shut down from, you guessed it, coronavirus. We were only supposed to be here for a couple of weeks and then back to Panama to go through the Canal to Pacific, but everything, as you know, has been put on hold. The good news is, now that we've got some time, and you just saw in previous video where I brought all these new products on board, I'll be able to start putting together some of the tech review videos that you guys have been waiting for. So from here, for the next few weeks as I take you on our journey for the last sale, I'll also be mixing it up a bit with some of our tech episodes. So as long as that's good with you guys, we're gonna start today with Life on Lithium. Day one, all the new gear and it's time to start installing. As you can see, we've got almost all the stuff kind of put away. It's somewhat clean in here, but uh, yeah, there's still stuff everywhere. But my first priority now is gonna be to get the batteries installed and hooked up and changed over to that system. So we're gonna switch from the lead acid batteries that are on board now over to the lithium batteries. So the first thing I need to do is figure out am I gonna put them in the same enclosure as the lead acid batteries are in now which would be the logical approach. The only problem is the lead acid batteries are golf cart batteries, so they're a little bit taller than they are long. So there's six of them in there in a series parallel circuit because golf cart batteries are six volts. So to get them up to 12 volts, we need to put two batteries in series, and then we have three of those banks of two each in the bank. So two batteries in series, two batteries in series, two batteries in series, and then we parallel all those three banks together and we get three banks of 12 volt batteries at 660 amp hours. Sounds complicated, but it's not really. Each battery is good for 220 amp hours at six volts. So when you put them in series, you get 220 amp hours at 12 volts. So when you put three of those banks in parallel, you get three times the 220 amp capacity. So that gives us 660 amp hours of capacity. Now, what we're converting to is 800 amp hours of lithium. Now, lithium has a much stronger discharge rate. You can actually take those down to almost zero and not damage the battery whatsoever. If I were to do that with the current bank of lead acid batteries, you would destroy them right off the bat because they just can't be taken down more than maybe 50%. Now, when you have 660 amp hours of capacity like I do, they say you can use up to 50% of that on a regular basis every single day, which is you know, what I try and do, but I found it not to be accurate in that over the course of the night time, if I start out with the batteries fully charged because by 6 p.m. when the sun is down, the batteries are fully topped up, but by the morning, my, vo my voltage is really, really low because I've already drawn almost 200 amp hours out because of all the refrigeration systems, fridge, freezer, computers, you know, things that are left running even overnight that have to keep running whether it's daytime or nighttime. So over the course of a night, I'm using an average of 200 amp hours. Now, what that translates to an actual power consumption is my draw on the entire system averages between 15 to 20 amps every hour all day long across 24 hours. So I use somewhere in the neighborhood of about 400 amp hours per day. Using that much power is no problem at all when the sun is out. Actually, I'm generating a surplus of power, so it's smart to have the extra refrigeration systems, freezers, all of that running during the day when there's surplus power that otherwise would just be wasted because the batteries can't absorb anymore. 
So that's what I do. I go around, I switch everything on just to start charging batteries. You know, if I have drone batteries need to charge, computer batteries, if the fridge needs to run or I freeze the freezer down a little bit more, I do that during the day. And of course the trade-off there is I'm running all the things that generate heat during the day. So it makes the boat much hotter having all these things running and that's what I'm trying to avoid. It would be much nicer to be able to run those things in the, in the nighttime when the temperature is cooler and actually you know, then we're sleeping, it doesn't matter. So if more heat generates out here, it's not affecting us. It's certainly not affecting me when I'm sitting here at my nav station because right now that's where my prime heat sources are. That's where the computers are generating all their heat, the refrigeration systems, everything over here generates heat and it makes it very, very hot to sit there all day sometimes, believe me. So that is one benefit I'm gonna have with the lithium is it's gonna allow me to actually run the, uh, the surplus energy during the nighttime and recharge it all during the day. That's a big change. See, the problem with the lead acid system is when I draw all this power at night, if I try and run the fridge, freezer, everything at night, once you draw down to 200 amp hours and then you still have a 20 amp load applied, that 20 amps is dropping the voltage because the problem with lead acid batteries is you get a huge amount of voltage sag whenever there's amount of amperage drawing from the batteries. If they're just sitting there dormant, then yeah, you'll have good voltage, it'll look fine. But as soon as you try and draw more than five or 10 amps out of the system, then you've got a problem because the voltage sag is going to drop and it's gonna limit the performance of your equipment, especially refrigeration gear. So I'm gonna open this compartment here so we can have a look at the lead acid system that's there now. And then I'm gonna open up and show you what I've got in mind for where I think I'm gonna put the lithium because there's eight batteries in the lithium system and they're not gonna fit all in the one compartment. I had thought about stacking them and putting them in there. There was a way I could actually put them in, but I don't think it was gonna be very wise and I think it's better to find a different place to move them and keep them all together. So I'll show you what I got in mind in a minute. As you can see, I've opened up the cabinet where I store the lead acid batteries now. This is where I've got the six batteries that are the golf cart six volts and they're all in series parallel. As you can also see, it's a bit of a rat's nest in there because the way the batteries are organized doesn't allow for linear wiring or anything like that. I've had to put them in a perpendicular crisscross fashion and then loop them all in their series parallel circuits from there. Functional, but not pretty, that's all. But I'm not gonna put them in here because there's just not enough room to accommodate all eight batteries without having them stacked on top of each other, and that's not gonna be good for heat dissipation should we encounter some huge loads, you know, in or out charging or discharging the batteries. You can also see just over here, that is where I've got the solar controller we installed a little while ago, and that's the one that's regulating the entire solar array up top right now. We have another solar controller that's going to offset some of the extra load that this one can't deal with because I've got 2.4 kilowatts up top and this system will handle a maximum of 1400 kilowatts. Now the reason I did that actually is just because when we're in full shade I can still generate over a kilowatt of solar power even in shade. So this system will handle that with all the extra solar. But on the days that we have lots of sun I could be still taking advantage of that extra sunshine and the extra power. So that's why we're going to add a secondary controller now and offset half the panels to the secondary controller and that way we should be able to pick up because right now I'm getting a hundred amps maximum from that system. That's what it's regulated to is 100 amps. We're putting in another controller that's good to 70 amps, but I'm figuring with the 2.4 kilowatts, you know, it's on a boat, so you're never going to get them all in full sun at the same time, but I should be able to approach 18 to 1900 watts, which means that I'm going to gain about 25 to 30 amps in theory or on paper. So that's what we're going to find out after we get it all hooked up and running. But that is another thing we're going to do is actually put in the secondary controller and then we'll start monitoring from there and see how it works. Now, in looking through the boat, trying to figure out where I was gonna put the new lithium bank, I had several different options. I could put them straight down underneath the floor because there is room. I used to have extra reserve capacity and lead acid batteries down there before. That would work. But I wanted to keep them high just in case, of course, you know, we ever take on water or anything like that. I don't want the batteries under the floor. The lithium batteries are actually sealed to be waterproof, but as soon as the terminals get underwater, then you've got a short, and that will, of course, overload the battery, and the battery will shut off, so you still won't have any power. 
So I'm going to try and keep them a little bit higher. But I found in the back of this settee right here, there's lots of storage in the back underneath it where we sit that is pretty much wasted space. I mean, I've been on the boat for 14 years and we don't store anything other than junk we never use. The reason is it's just hard to get to. It's not a good place to put stuff that we need to get at on a day-by-day -day basis. So I just don't use it. So we're going to open that up, empty it out, and put the batteries in there because I've already tested and eight batteries fit just perfect. <laughs> they just fit, just like that. I mean, it's so close, but it's beautiful. So I've already got them laid in there. I'm going to open that up now and show you, and then we're going to get on to the wiring and uh, how we're going to hook them up. Okay, everything is open and as you can see, we've got both banks exposed now. So this is the lead acid battery bank here that we're replacing. And over here, we've got the lithium bank that is uh, being hooked up to replace it. So you can see it is a thing of beauty. It fits in there just perfect. Check this out. We got two storage lockers there underneath the settee and each one fits four batteries just perfectly. So you can see I've already got all the daisy chain links set up and installed. And they're all made from this wire right here, which is a one zero gauge welding cable, which is extremely flexible, designed for great going around corners, anything like that, especially good in boats, very high power. It'll handle a lot of current, dissipates heat well, and it's very, very fine copper strand. Now this is not tinned copper, so it's not meant for a boat, but it does work great on a boat. But if you're gonna use something like this that's not tinned copper, you need to insulate the connection. So that's why We've gone to connectors like this. These are compression fittings, okay? They're solid copper. And once you compress the wire into this fitting, you insulate it with a piece of heat shrink tubing, just like this. I've already cut these into one inch pieces. This is a 5 8 diameter heat shrink tubing designed for this size of wire, and it has hot glue inside. So that's very important because the hot glue is what will actually insulate the entire connection to make sure that no moisture, humidity, anything will ever get in. So as long as you have sealed them up completely with these types of fittings and the heat shrink, your connections are going to be good for, well, I've used this wire for many, many other applications on the boat and it's good for 10 years as long as you make sure the heat shrink is uh, well applied. <laughs> So this is all the joiners from the previous bank, the lead acid bank. You can see I've removed them all and all I have here is just some of the temporary connections that I've left in to connect the new lithium bank into the boat itself. So they're hooking up temporarily. Now the next step, we're going to take these batteries out and then we're going to take this. We have to put this onto a terminal block and we're going to take the solar charging wire from here and combine those two together. The solar charging wire, it needs to run over to the battery bank itself. So it's going to go over by the main discharge wire. So that is one thing to keep in mind. You always want to keep your discharge and your charge lines at the exact same point in your battery bank. And we're going to go over some of the points of where you should put those lines within your battery bank, depending on how you're configuring the batteries themselves. We have eight batteries in parallel, so I'll show you later how we put all the charge and discharge lines into the bank accordingly to make sure that each battery charges and discharges at as close to equal rates as possible all the time. So next thing on the list is just to remove the remaining wiring and then we're going to pull out these golf cart batteries, get them all cleaned up for their new owner. And then we can start working on the layout of all the new equipment that's going to replace our current electrical system. And as you can see, this one's going to run far and deep as I'm diving in everywhere and replacing old wires all over the place. But in this episode, I just wanted to introduce you to the concept of what we're working on and of course the products that we're using and why. Keep an eye out for part two of Life on Lithium. And if you have any questions about what we've been discussing here or any of the products, feel free to leave them in the comments below and we'll discuss them in next episode. Until then, keep an eye out for next series episode that Brendan is working on right now and should be released this weekend. You'll meet Brian and Amalia who are new cruisers and looking to gain some offshore experience. And they got a little bit more than they were looking for. <laughs> but after all was said, everybody lived. So enjoy your day, everybody. Stay safe, stay home, and let's continue Continue to learn. On the south side of Cuba, you get nice, strong north winds, and that's great. You can just book it east.
And of course, after a long day working on the boat, what better than to kick back and relax watching a couple of our favorite YouTube channels. Tonight, it's Project Atticus. And look, even Tiki loves it. <laughs> But seriously, if you haven't seen them, you should look them up. And be sure and tell them Captain Rick says hi. Hey there, Claire. Oh, well, we're going about five knots, moving right along. Got the mountains in the distance. Pretty nice. Well, even Tiki likes to watch Atticus. How funny is that? <laughs> We are going 